혹시 처음, 처음 오신 분 계세요? 네, 등록했어요? 아니, 등록은 뭐 자, 자리 있으니까 등록하는 건 마음이... 다변수랑 헷갈렸어. 여기 이름 안 보이시는 분 계세요? 어, 자기 이름 뭐예요? 석시원? 전에 들었던 것 같은데. 아, 내가 그 저거를 업데이트를 안 해놨구나. 지금 어디 계세요? 몇 조에 계세요? 5조, 5조에 있을래요? 5조? 5조에, 지금 5조 뒤에 있으니까 5조, 5조랑 같이 하세요. 또, 이름 없으신 분. 네. Okay, shall we start? So we went through almost half of the slide yesterday, uh, last time. So I'm going to skip to the half. Uh, by the way, is there any questions before we skip to the middle? Okay, maybe I will. Um, some i will explain some concept again so maybe where's the good good start okay maybe this is the good start so let's talk about linear transformation first so in quantum computing everything is linear com linear transformation everything is in linear uh, algebra so quantum state is vector, uh, quantum gate is linear transformation. So whenever we talk about gate or operator, you can, uh, you have to remember it's a linear transformation. So here is the cat bra notation of operator. So operator is basically linear transformation between qubits and we can represent it by cat bra notation. So it's easy. So cat bra, this is cat and bra. If you combine them, this entire thing is the operator. And if you feed cat to an operator, you get cat uh, bra cat here. That's the bracket. And what is the bracket? It's a number. So your number multiplied with the remaining cat this cat coming from here is a cat. So basically, cat bra notation gives you map between cat and cat. So easiest way to <clears throat> construct a cat bra is for the one qubit. And it is a linear combination of these four cat bra, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0. And you can also express them into two by two matrices. So 0, 0 means 1, 0, 0, 0, 2 by 2 matrix. And you can easily uh, come up with this, how this 2 by 2 matrix is co correspond to the 0, 0 cat bra. Because bra is 1 by 2 matrix, 1, 0. And cat is 2 by 1 matrix, 1, 0. So if you multiply these two matrix, you get 2 by 2. And rest of the matrix rep representation are the same. And we went through some examples. And <clears throat> now you can also define operator acting on the multiple qubit by taking a tensor product between operators. So this is a definition. So if you have m qubit state and n qubit state and tensor product to get n plus m qubit state, then n if you have an operator acting on n qubit state and m qubit state, then this tensor product as an operator gives you the, the linear transformation on n plus m qubit state. 
So this is how you act each operator. So basically, if you break down every operator, it's a tensor product of one qubit operator. But this is how you express the general n qubit state. Okay, so um, if you working on n qubit state, there are n qubits, then the n qubit operators are uh, decomposed into the base operator like this one. So here i and j are uh, integer from 0 to 2 to the n minus 1. Uh, we agreed that we can express any cat n cat n qubit state into a single number. Uh, for example, if I say 3, 5, this means it's a 5 qubit state represented by number 3 because 3 is 1, 1. And since we have 5 qubit, we need to add 3 more zeros here. So it means that first, uh, so we need more space. So first two qubits are in the state of cat1, but the rest of the qubits are in the qubit state cat0. So you can use this representation of n qubit state to make a cat bra to represent base operators. So for example, if you use this way. So it's a two qubit state. Let me make it into a uh, longer form. So three is also a two qubit state. So it's one, one. And one, zero is two qubit state. So it's a zero, zero. So let's make it into a matrix form. So one, one is zero, one, tensor, zero, one. And then, uh, so this is entire matrix. And here, 0, 0 is 1, 0, tensor, 1, 0. OK, so what is the tensor between 1, 2, 1, 2 matrix? So 1, 4 matrix. Right? So it's 0, 0, 0, 1 multiplied to 1, 0, 0, 0. So that's why we get 4 by 4 matrix like this. So it's up to you whether you want to work with this, uh, this expression or matrix expression. But remember that the matrix representation uh, may contain lots of zero. So the information is somehow redundant. So you might want to consider this can be a little bit compact and efficient way to express and dealing with the uh, quantum state. Okay, so how about we take the product of operators? So as I said, linear transformation is a map. So map can be composed together. So you take the map and then take the map again to the outcome. Uh, it's the same thing for the operator. Simply since it's because matrix, uh, it has a matrix representation, you can consider the composition of operator as a multiplication of matrices like this one. So it means that you take an operation of u1 on psi, and then you take the operation of u2 of that result. And if you have an n qubit state, an n qubit uh, operator, then you can do the same. Um, for example, if you have the n qubit operator decomposed into one qubit operators like this and same for this one then the product so here the superscript n is not the multiple of n it's not the it's not the power of u it's just represent that it's the operator acting on n qubit state and uh, this is defined to be the operate uh, tensor product of one qubit operators like this one. So simply applying each qubit separately with the given operator, one qubit operators. Okay, so here is an example. So 
we have one qubit operator 0 0 and 1 1 in a cat bra notation uh, how about we multiply it together to get a new operator so actually when when we do take the op product you get nil operator which means that it annihilates every qubit state so for example if i take the multiple of these two operators and feed it to the cat zero state then the first action of operator is zero it gives you zero vector so zero vector is always zero and also if you feed cat one state then first you get the cat one but second operator gives you zero vectors so no matter what cat vector is you always get zero vectors so cat zero and cat one are the basis so every one qubit state goes to zero state and you don't need to uh, test every basis vector um, because cat bra notation is useful when you do the bracket operation so for example i want to multiply these to cat bra so you can combine in between bracket here so it's already zero so zero times any operator is a zero operator nil operator so you can come up with the same conclusion with this calculation okay all right so here is the interesting stuff so ideally operator is any linear any linear transformation is an operator but in practice we cannot create an operator which is not unitary. So unitary operator is an operator represented by a unitary matrix. And what is a unitary matrix? It's square matrix satisfying these equations. So this U star is U conjugate transpose. So for example, if U is alpha, beta, uh, gamma delta then u star is alpha bar beta bar gamma bar delta bar here okay so uh, it doesn't matter the order of multiplication no matter which order you multiply these two matrices if you get the identity matrix then you call this u a unitary matrix so in the quantum operator uh, situation, instead of taking uh, the conjugate here, so it's the dagger that represents the conjugate transpose. So this U dagger is something that corresponds to U star. So this is operator. I use the same symbol for operator and uh, matrix, but uh, the, it's a different object. So U dagger is the dual operator and U star is the conjugate transpose of matrix U. Okay. Okay. So in the operator's perspective, if you multiply these two operators, U dagger and U, if you get always identity operator it's also called a unitary operator so basically they are the same thing so if you have a unitary operator it's same as having a unitary matrix and if you have a unitary matrix then you can think about the unitary operator okay so uh, what is the property of unitary operator first an operator is unitary if it's if and only if its matrix representation is unitary. That's what I just said. And the simplest operator, the smallest operator you can get is two by two matrix. Uh, it's the operator acting on one qubit state. Unitary operator, uh, unitary matrix of two by two size is always in this form. So A, B are any co uh, complex number but it's not a random complex number it has to satisfy this condition and the rest of the field is fixed as this one and if you take the product of any unitary operator or unitary matrix it is again a unitary 
So unitary is closed under product. So you can see the reason clearly why it's true. So if you take two unitary operator, or here it's operator, u and v, and you take the dagger and multiply it together. So dagger is taking a conjugate and transpose, so you can distribute your dagger, but it switch the order of multiplication. So you get v dagger, u dagger, u v. So u dagger u becomes identity because we assumed u is unitary. And v dagger v also goes to identity. So it's always identity. OK, so why we are talking about unitary? So there are uh, good reason why we are dealing with the unitary, but this is actually why we are talking about unitary. All, when we talk about the quantum circuit, we can only create certain types of uh, gates. And this poly operator is the, uh, main, the, one of the most important, one, I mean, main gates that we can create in the quantum circuit. So there are three types of Pauli operator. I think I mentioned Pauli matrix before, but it's a Pauli operator that actually works in the quantum circuit. So they are represented by two by two unitary matrix like this one. And you can sim easily see that these three operators are square to be identity identity operator, just I. And you can see that this uh, sigma y is sigma x, sigma z, uh, one, wait, I think there's a typo, no. X, sigma x, sigma z gives me one, two, one, two, ah, yeah, I, yes. Like this one. So sigma y is not really a new operator. It's a combination of two other Pauli operators. So what is important is the Pauli x and Pauli y. Okay, so um, why we are talking about this? Because of this theorem. So let me show you the theorem first and then come back. So this theorem says Every unitary operator on one qubit can be written of this form. So any operator u is of the exponential of some linear combination of Pauli operators. So here, h is just a three-dimensional vector. Uh, we can say it's a u, well, let's say h1, h2, h3 vector, and here sigma is the vector of three Pauli operator, sigma z. So just consider this as a symbolically. So if you have three, uh, two three-dimensional vector and take the inner product between them, you simply multiply component-wide and add them together, right? So what this means is you're taking exponential of minus i times phi. So here phi is just the real number representing angle, and multiply to h1 sigma x, h2 sigma y, h3 sigma z. So here we have two by two matrix in a linear combination of Pauli matrices. And you multiply some constant and you take the exponential. So you're probably not familiar with taking exponential on the matrix. That's why uh, let me go back to our sl slide, the previous slide here. So when you take an exponential of a matrix, that's how you take the exponential. Uh, in the real number, or in the complex number two, the exponential is computed by this power series. Right? So you just replace the x for the matrix u here. So actually, u can be any square matrix as long because square matrix can be powered. Uh, here, we're talking about the unitary matrix u. And if you uh, have this 
So actually, this is not true unless u v equals to v u. Um, then uh, you have these two identities. So this is a definition, actually. This is definition. So you're taking identity matrix and the u and then u squared divided by 2 factorial and so on. You add all of this matrix for infinity and then you get some 2 by 2 matrix, right? So that's how you define exponential u. And this is uh, simply if you add these 2 by 2 matrix and then throw it in, into the exponential, it's same as compute exponential and then multiply as matrices. Okay, so before we keep move on, let me make sure you understand this. So let's try to compute uh, exponential of 2, 3, 0, 0. Okay, so let me do it together and then I'll give you there are a lot other examples that you can do. So let me give you a calculation. So just throw into the definition. If I put this as a U, although it's not a unitary, I'm just making a random matrix here, just to show you how the exponential works. It's identity. So let me write identity matrix 0, 0, 0, 1. And then U and then 1 over 2 factorial square of this and so on. So what is it? 1, 0, 0, 1, 2, 0, 0, 3, 1 over 2 factorial 2, 1 over 2 factorial times 3 squared and so on. So What's the first com component of 2 by 2 matrix? If you add this for infinity, you get 1 plus, 2 plus, 2 squared divided by 2 factorial, and so on. That's same as exponential 2. Right? About second element, it's always 0, so you get 0. Third one is also always zero. How about the last one? What's the what's the number for the last one? Exponential? Three. Yes. So by the way, that's because we have a diagonal matrix. So if you have a non-diagonal matrix, let's see what happens. So exponential zero one one zero. So I'm not telling you that if you take the exponential of a matrix, it's not taking exponential on each element. It's not that way. Okay. So it's one zero zero uh, one plus zero one one zero plus one over two factorial. So here. Uh, you have to take the square. Now, if you take the square, it's the identity again. It's 1 over 3, 0, 1, 1, 0. Right? So on. So, uh, now imagine you combine all of these terms into a single 2 by 2 matrix. What's the first element? It's 1 plus 1 over 2 factorial times 1. Now, there's no uh, non-zero term here. It's zero in the third part. So it, you skip this and it goes to fourth and so on, right? So similar on here. So what's the first element here? One plus one over two factorial plus one over four factorial. Anyone know what, what this is?
hyperbolic hyperbolic cosine okay <laughs> okay so e x 1 plus x x square 2 factorial so on right so e to the minus x is 1 minus x plus 2 factorial x square minus 3 factorial x cube so on uh, here it's 3 factorial x cube and so on so what happens when you add these together you get 2 2 uh, so 2 times of everything so 2 times 1 plus 2 factorial x square plus 4 factorial x fourths so 1 over 2 e x e minus x is 1 plus 2 factorial x square 4 factorial x fourths and so on what is this it's a hyperbolic cosine right so we have hyperbolic cosine of one okay you can do similar on the other element okay so i'm showing this example so that you don't make a mistake when you compute exponential of matrix it's not taking f exponential on each element of matrix it's something else so it's not that easy it's not you know distributing exponential okay but it works okay so it works so exponential of matrix is a matrix okay <clears throat> so uh this is a definition an operator is called hermitian if the operator h is same as the operator h dagger i think it's a bad notation because i used h for the three-dimensional uh, real vector but anyway so h consider in this sentence h as an operator and it called hermitian if it's same as its conjugate transpose and every Hermitian operator can be written as follows. So if H is an Hermitian operator, which means that it's same as its dagger, then it's always a linear combination of identity operator, Pauli X, Pauli Y, and Pauli Z. Here, H0, 1, 2, 3 are all real numbers, not complex. Okay, so be careful in this case, it's not complex. And it can be written in terms of h vector times the sigma. So here, that's the same thing. So h vector is the three-dimensional vector of real number, and sigma vector is the three-dimensional vector of Pauli sigma. Okay, uh, you can just think about this as a, a symbolic expression, just to shorten this long linear transformation into shorter expression. And the third one is if H is Hermitian operator, then if you take the exponential here, it's always a unitary operator. Okay. Oh, maybe we can maybe we can work on this one maybe later. So after we went through all the slide. So let me just check this. Okay, here are two other properties that we can work on. Um, let's say we have two Hermitian operator like this one, a dot sigma, b dot sigma. So we don't have identity matrix, identity operator added on, it's just a linear combination of three Pauli matrices. And let's say I want to multiply these two operators this way, then it's same as split this into identity operator and the linear combination of Pauli operator like this. So it's not trivial equation. So you have to drive it from the left to right. 
And let's look at another one. So I think second one is a bit, so we will talk this later after we went through all the slide. So how about let's talk about the second one first. So if you have a poly operator, so it, uh, either it's poly X or poly Y, poly Z, then this is true, this is true. So what is it? So if you take the exponential of this form, so we have psi of C, phi as a real number, and we have a imaginary number multiplied, then if you take the exponential, it's same as the linear combination of identity operator and the same Pauli matrix. So let's prove this. Let's check why this is true. So exponential of i psi sigma, let's put it into definition. Um, I, uh, so first it's identity, and then i phi sigma, so that's entire, that's the entire matrix. And then one over two, i phi sigma square, and let's do one more, i phi sigma cube, and so on. So identity just identity. And I want to collect the real part and imaginary part. Okay, so although the polymetric, the element of polymetric is also complex number, but I just want to uh, separate out this i, these i's. Okay, so uh, this one has i, so I'm going to put it at the end. So phi sigma and this one has no i because i squared is minus 1. So I get minus 1, 1 over 2 factorial, v squared, sigma squared. And then now I have 1i because i cubed is minus i. So But I have minus, so 1 over 3 factorial, v cubed, sigma cubed. By the way, I can distribute cubed because this is simply a constant multiplied to poly matrix, right? And so on. So here is the real part and here is the imaginary part. So what does this real part says? So what's the, what's the square of every poly matrix? It's always identity matrix. You can replace everything by identity matrix. So what we're doing here is simply adding identity matrix with different constant multiplied. So basically it's one minus one over two factorial V square. If I do one more, then I get one over four factorial V four and plus minus are alternating times I. And then here we always get uh, Pauli sigma because Pauli cube is simply Pauli, right? So we have V minus 1 over 3 factorial V cube. If I do one more, I get 1 over 5 cube, 5 factorial V cube, uh, not fifths, and sigma. So this part is cosine phi, right? That might be familiar because that's the power power series, uh, I mean Taylor series. So then this one is sine phi, right? But minus i. Oh, why is it minus? Um, it's not minus, right? So it's plus. Sorry. So typo. Okay. <clears throat> oh no no no! It's not. Yeah, it's typo. Yeah, phi. Okay, so that's that, and this will do it together. So what we want, uh, these two are required in order to prove this theorem that I mentioned. So every unitary operator is expressed in this form, the exponential of some Hermitian matrix. So H sigma is Hermitian matrix. It's one of the special form of Hermitian matrix. And before we check the proof of this theorem, let me say why we are talking about this form. So 
So the reason why we are talking about this form is that this is how you actually rotate the quantum state in certain bases. So think about the poly operator, uh, unitary operator of some poly operator sigma here. So this means that it's a two feet rotation about the sigma axis. So what does that mean? So it, you have to think about this uh, in a, some ideal, in an abstract sense. So as I said, this uh, poly sigma poly x and poly y and poly z satisfy some uh, relation that is closely related to the three-dimensional vector 1 0 0 0 1 0 0 0 1 because these three-dimensional vectors can be cross product each other to get another one and same for the poly matrix if they are multiplied together they give another vector with some constant multiplied Anyway, so you can consider three-dimensional dim space uh, of three axes represented by three Pauli matrices like this. So if I take a Pauli matrix sigma x and exponential of minus i phi sigma x, then if I multiply, I mean, if I'm taking this as an operator, it means that I'm rotating my space around sigma axis by two phi degree. So the two phi actually comes from the calculation that we're going to see shortly. So before we prove this, let me see, let me show you why this is a rotation. Let me go to here. So I'm going to take phi to be pi over 4, so 45 degree. And I want to ch check, I know, and also I want to put my poly sigma to be poly z. Okay. So I want to show that this poly z is actually, I mean, this, this unitary matrix is actually the rotation around the poly z axis. Why is that? So if you want to show that it's a rotation, you're not actually rotating your rotate what you're rotating is rotating the frame okay there are x axis to every three dimensional vector uh, space and these axis uh, axis are called the frame reference frame what you're rotating is not a vector you're actually rotating the reference frame so you had First, this rotate uh, this reference frame. Reference frame. But after you apply U here, then you get a rotation around poly Z axis. So what happens? This. Uh, so here, the rotation angle is pi over 4, so it's a uh, rotation by twice, so it's going to be uh, pi over 2 rotation, so it's a 90 degree rotation. So this uh, poly x axis is now in here, and this one will be poly y. That's what we are going to talk about. Uh, that's what, what we mean that this U rotates around Pauli Z axis. So let's compute. So what we're going to do is try to rotate this sigma V, sigma X. So in order to rotate, you have to change your frame of reference. It's not just multiplying. You have to multiply your uh, operator and then uh, affects this sigma X and then reverse it back to the original frame to see that it actually rotated, right? So if you just rotate, you don't know whether it's rotated or not. You need the reference frame. So we are going to see the result in terms of the first reference frame, whether it's actually rotated. So that's why we're going to compute this part, this way. So computation is pretty simple, just uh, using the 
the identity we just show you. Um, first of all, first of all, U <clears throat> is this. So we have uh, phi equals to uh, minus. Sorry, so that phi is actually phi in here. Phi, uh, not this one. Yeah, phi in here. So I didn't put minus in here. So, so what I'm doing here is, so I'm taking this as cosine of minus pi over four i plus i sine minus pi over four sigma z. Okay, so that's this, right? And then what happens when you take the conjugate transpose of this matrix? You simply take the conjugate transpose on each matrix like this, right? So conjugate transpose of sigma z is sigma z. Nothing change. One is also one. But if you take the conjugate of i, you get minus i. So that's why you get a plus here, okay? So if you distribute everything, um, you get this values and you see um, well you have to do some more calculation to include this one but okay so sigma z sigma x is minus sigma x uh, sigma z so you can combine these two to get i of sigma z sigma x right and how about this so let's try to interchange this say minus sigma x sigma z but then you can combine these two to get i so what you get is 1 over 2 the first one comes from 1 over 2 x sigma x and then plus i sigma z sigma x minus 1 over 2 sigma x and this cancels out and what is this that's sigma y so you actually rotated your sigma x to sigma y. So you can do with a different angle. You can check with a different angle. This is the simplest way to show the rotation, but it works with other rotation angle. Okay. <clears throat> so I uh, think you have, might have another question, but let me finish with the proof. So we want to show that this is actually true. Maybe I was, um, I thought about whether it's a good idea to give the proof for this theorem uh, or not. But um, so this proof is not going to be used later on. But it's but I'm giving you the proof just just so that you can get a nice feeling of the mathematical um, settings that we are going to use in the rest of the quantum computing um, context. So here is the how it's proved. So we are going to take a random unitary operator uh, acting on a one qubit. So every unitary operator can be used as a linear combination of identity matrix and poly matrices. Here, the coefficient is constant. Here is coefficient constant. Now, since we assume that this operator is unitary, it must satisfy this identity. So let's try to uh, put this in here. So you, sorry. Here, u dagger, let me write here, u dagger is u0 bar plus u star times sigma star. So it's going to be u0 bar plus u1 bar sigma x bar. But, but sigma x bar is same as sigma x because there's no complex number. Okay, let me put it anyway. So u2 bar sigma y bar u3 bar sigma z bar. And I'm going to multiply with u. 
So u0 plus u1. So let me do it here. So multiply it with u0. So I forgot to put identity here. Identity. So here identity and u1 sigma x, u2 sigma 2 u3 sigma 3 and now you distribute everything so how about first one so identity identity you get u0 bar u0 so that's the size square of u0 complex number that's why we have here and um so how about we take this one u0 multiplied to here, it's everything in here, okay? So uh, if you do that, then you get this one, u0 conjugate, so I put the conjugate as a bar, but I here I put the conjugate as a star, asterisk, multiplied to uh, each of u1, u2, u3, so I'm going to use that as a matrix, and then inner product with the sigma, and you do the same thing for this term and this term, okay? This term. And the last part is multiplying these term with these term. That actually comes from the previous property that I didn't prove yet. So this comes from this property. So if you multiply a uh, linear combination of two Pauli matrices, then you get this identity. So that's why we have here. So this one. So this one is going, uh, okay, so I didn't apply it yet. So this goes to, what was it? I forgot. So A, B, okay. So A, U star inner product U plus I U star cross product U inner product sigma okay so i want that to be one i want that to be one so it means that if i collect the identity matrix part so these two parts are identity so that's okay so what is that so first part is just a real number here and second part if you consider what this is it's the inner product of the complex vectors three-dimensional complex vector to itself. It's the inner product of three-dimensional complex vectors vector to itself. So therefore, it's the square of norm of that three-dimensional complex vector. So basically, you get this because you need to be one. So you have to, sur you have, to have survived this as equals to one as a coefficient. And rest of all, the other Pauli matrix part, must vanish. So if you collect all the coefficient, then it must be zero. So from now, what we can assume is that um, in some sense, as I, I think I mentioned it when I talk about the block sphere. So when you try to uh, put the quantum state in the form of complex vector, um, you can do, you, you actually need four real numbers, but you can actually do it three real numbers because you can assume that the phase of the first coefficient equals to zero. So anyway, the same thing applies here, same idea applies here. So here we assume that u0 is a complex number, but it's the same as we, we assume that this u0 has a zero phase. Uh, in, in it. So that means u0 normally should be some x plus i y, but I'm just ignoring this to be 0. So I can assume that u0 is a real number. So then what I get uh, is what's the real part and imaginary part is the of the vector u. So vector u is not real num a real vector. It's a still complex vector. We need to figure out what are the comp component of this vector. 
However, uh, if, you uh, if you replace it with the real part and imaginary part, and I intentionally put the minus sign here, what you get is after you plug in, plug this setting in here, in here, what you get is that you all you need to get this equation. So you can read through the slide later to find out why this is true. And look at this equation carefully. So real of u vector and imaginary vector, imaginary of the u vector are both three-dimensional real vector, three-dimensional real vector. If you take the inner product, I mean cross product of these two vectors, you get vector which is perpendicular to both of these vectors, right? So you some you have in here, this is perpendicular to real u and imaginary of u. But this equation says you add this vector which is perpendicular to both these and these to one of these to get zero. It's not possible unless you have this real u equals to zero. You cannot make a zero vector by adding two perpendicular vectors, right? It's not possible. So real u is zero. That means the complex three-dimensional vector u is purely complex. It consists of pure, pure imaginary number. So I can replace u by minus u here. And now assume that this u is in the R3, but that's, I, I already, already put it here. So therefore, if, if I replace the size of u0 to be cosine phi and size of u vector to be sine phi, then I get this equation. So the reason why I can do this is because I already have this equation, so this one. The sizes are squared equal to be a square, square, a sum of squares of each size equals to one. So that's why I can replace this to be cosine phi, this to be sine phi. And then we have this expression. So this expression is directly the expression of exponential. So therefore, we prove the theorem. So let me give you the final remark uh, before I finish. So here, when I have exponential of minus phi u x here, um, oh, for example, if I have a, let's say, um, 1 over 2 phi x. So let's compute what this is. So it's a cosine pi over 2 i plus i sine minus 2 pi sigma x. So cosine pi over 2 is 0, so we get i times minus 1 sigma x. So you get minus i sigma x. So the unitary matrix determined by permission matrix sigma x is actually same as this one. Okay? 0, 1, 1, 0. So what does it do? Um, it does change. Uh, it's okay, so sig, psi, whatever that is. So it changed the cat 0 to minus i cat 1 and it changes to cat 1 to minus i cat 0. So interchanges cat 1 and cat 0. So actually same as working of the Pauli x matrix, almost same, except that we have a additional, additional coefficient applies here. But you can ignore this additional coefficient if you just working with the uh, quantum gates later on because it doesn't do anything when you take the measurement. So anyway, so what it says is that if you take a, if you take a Hermitian matrix of uh, sigma x, and then you try to rotate by pi over two or pi, 
in, in sense, it's a rotation by pi, rotation of rotation by pi uh, along sigma x. That means you actually get sigma x. So it's a it's, it's so sigma x is actually the bit flip operation. So you're doing you're applying sigma x so that you get bit flip. So if you replace this Pauli with a different Pauli, that also means that it this operator, the exponential of this permission operator, is same as applying that Pauli operator on the qubit. So the reason why it's same as applying the same thing is that it's the rotation angle is pi. So what if I take minus pi sigma x instead? So I get something, right? Let's say I get something. So if I do it twice of u, then what I get is exponential of twice of this permission operator because of this the property of exponential I get this pi rotation of sigma x so that means basically it's basically same as sigma x so when I do rotation with the angle of pi over 4 then I get an operator whose square is the uh, sigma x operator. So in some sense, I can say this is square root sigma x. Because if I square that, I get sigma x, right? So the reason why we're talking about this type of representing a unitary operator is to make sure how to write the operator that we are going to use later in a proper way. So if you want, the like say uh, eight you might want to use this pi over eight rotation of the poly operator okay so that means you want to use the operator something in this form so that means you get sigma x of quarter power like this okay so so that's actually uh, useful when you're dealing with uh, quantum computing. Okay, so that's basically our um, material. So I want to go back to the part that I missed here. So then, let me see here. So I think, uh, let me, there was something more. No, no, not this. Okay, so I think that was the first one. So how about we prove this? How about let's think about this statement. So if H is Hermitian operator, then exponential is a unitary operator. I think it's fairly, uh, I think it's a doable thing to prove. Okay. So, so meanwhile, before we begin discussing, discussing this part, let me take any questions if you have. Anyone have any question? Okay, so let's try to prove this. So if, if H is a Hermitian operator, we have a definition right here, then prove that exponential H I is unitary operator. Okay. So you can first uh, think, think, think about the question by yourself, and maybe after two minutes you can talk to your friends next to you, and what your friends are think and check out what what other friends are talking thinking about, and then put it into the group discussion.
Okay, so I'm going to ask uh, groups. I mean, is there any group figured out how to prove this? Anyone, any group, volunteer? How about group four? I heard you guys talking something. Did you did you figure out how to prove it? Okay. So how are you were you going to prove this? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, how, where, where did you, where, 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 where did cosine sine formula comes in? Uh, here, uh, here? Oh, I see. You try to, oh, okay. So that's a good way to go. Okay. Um, right. Yeah, that's a, well, that's a good way to go. Right. Anyone, yeah, the, anyone, any other group have a different approach? So they're, they're trying to say is, okay, so they're trying to put this in cosine. Okay, so there's no psi here, but let's see. So it's a little bit, uh, so let me check again. So you're trying to use this, right? So here is sigma is either one of the poly metrics. Uh, so, so the problem is here, H may not be a poly matrix. It's just a Hermitian operator. So this one only works for poly operator. Okay. Hermitian operator is a linear combination of poly operator, but also you can include identity here. There's something larger category than the Pauli matrix. So Pauli matrix is a Hermitian matrix, Hermitian operator, but not all Hermitian operator are Pauli, op Pauli operator. Okay. So, okay. So if if this is, let's see, some of the Pauli matrix like Pauli X, then you can say this is i plus sine 1 sigma x and this one is cosine 1 i minus i i forgot i sine 1 sigma x dagger Mm-hmm. Right. It can it can come out, yes. So okay, so yeah, let's state let's do it that way. So we have I multiply I H zero I H one sigma H two sigma Y H three sigma Z and you want to take this out the first part times exponential H one sigma H two sigma Y and H three sigma Z. You, you can do this way too. Yeah, you can now separate it out. So maybe we can do it more uh, down to earth method using down to earth method. So for example, if I just assume nothing but the Hermitian matrix, then let's write it out as the, the by the definition. 
we get h squared, 2 factorial, and so on. And what is the dagger? It's one dagger of everything above. So h dagger plus 2 factorial, h dagger square. So you have to take the dagger after square, but you can also include it in inside. So you want to see that h, uh, u and u dagger multiply to 1. Multiplied h dagger plus h dagger square. So, um, wait. So Hermitian, if it's the same, um, did I forget something? Oh, I forgot I, sorry. So I forgot I here. So every, everything here, I minus here and dagger. Now, if I take the dagger, it is minus I. Right? So, and this is still minus, and so on. So, I forgot i. So, here 1 plus i h and minus and 1 minus i h, and you get minus here, and so on. But now let's think about the definition of Hermitian matrix. So, Hermitian matrix says that h dagger is same as h, right? So I can rewrite this h, 2 factorial, h square, and so on. 1 minus i h minus 2 h square plus and so on. So, uh, well, let's try to distribute everything here. So 1 is minus uh, hi plus hi, so you have uh, h parts cancelled out. And how about squaring part? So you have uh, i times minus i and h square, and you have uh, h square terms here, so you get minus h square and minus h square. So this is plus one, so and this is minus. 1 over 2 and minus 1 over 2, so these things cancel out, and so on. So you can imagine that will cancel out for every power of h, so you only get leave, only have 1 here. So that basically I'm using the, the property of the exponential function, so um, this is one way you can, another way, another way you can Proof that this u is a unitary operator. Is there any other group used a different approach than this one? Anyone? Or any questions that you wanted to, that you tried but didn't work? No? Okay, so um, it, I don't think we have time for, uh, maybe we can, yeah, we don't have time for going through another one. But um, yeah, but I think this is not that important, that this is not super important, but I think uh, it's fun to do this calculation, fun to check whether this is true. Just check on yourself. So you, th this is something like this. You have, um, let me show you a little bit of calculation here. So A1, sigma x, B1, I uh, sorry, A2, sigma y, A3, sigma z, times B1, sigma x, B2 sigma y, B3 sigma z. Now you have to multiply everything here. A1, B1, sigma 1 square. 
a2 b2 sigma y square a3 b3 sigma z square and so on so that for example uh, you might want to multiply x and y and y and x that combine together because if you multiply uh, if you interchange the multiplication you get something like a1 b2 minus a2 b1 sigma x sigma y and so on so what is this this part is simply a1 b1 up to a3 b3 times identity because every power matrix are squared to be minus uh, identity and this part is now becomes some constant multiple of sigma z okay so here is the part with the linear combination of power matrix here is the part with the identity part where coefficient are given by simply the inner product of given two three-dimensional real vector right so that's how you basically do the calculation okay so um i heard some per some some of us are not familiar with the computation but i think if it's the case, I'm, I'm perfectly willing to go through the basic backgrounds on, on math, math part. So let me know if you have any trouble doing this computation or following the lecture. Uh, I don't want you to struggle because of the math part, because it's going to be fun uh, from now on, because let me show you briefly what we're going to cover next time. So here is the slide that I already uploaded on the notion, but I didn't go through today. So we are going through the quantum gate next time. So it's actually a how operator act on specific quantum state. So actually done by the matrix multiplication, but you can express your quantum gate, not always by a matrix. I mean, it can always by matrix, but sometimes it's, uh, not by matrix symbol, but by some symbolic expressions, such, such like this one. So for example, if you want to express some controlled gate, then this is one way you can symbolically express the control gate, saying that the qubit zero is control and qubit one is applying the U gate. You don't need like math, you don't need a huge math background to understand what that is although you if you want to compute concretely you need uh you need to know how to compute a matrix multiplication but anyway um it's i don't want you to struggle just because of the math part because you just need very easy math skill in order to do this so, okay, so let's call it here. See you on Wednesday. If you have any trouble or if you have any questions, let me know after class or we'll see it on Wednesday.